Today I'd like to talk about the 2011 discrete graphics chip issue a little bit. In the last video, I talked about why reballing is bullshit and why I think reballing is a terrible, terrible thing to do to a dead laptop graphics chip. Now, a lot of people have been saying, well, if that's not a solution, then what is? What do you suggest I do? You may be thinking, since I run a repair company and I'm sitting next to this machine, that this is the part where I just put a plug in where I say, why don't you just give me a couple of hundred dollars and I'll do it for you. That's not what this video is about. This video is actually about how you can spend zero dollars and get a computer that is better than the one that you have now. Or if you want, you can spend three hundred dollars and get a computer that is worlds better than what you have now. And that's going to be pretty cool. So I'm going to start explaining exactly what you're going to do. And it may seem silly at the time, but I'm going to explain at the end why I told you to do everything that I told you to do. And I'm going to show you how this is going to get you a much better laptop. So please I know, attention spans are low nowadays, but watch the whole thing and you're going to learn something. So you're going to have your laptop at a point where it's not turning on properly, or it's turning on with distorted images on the screen, or it's, it's freezing for no reason in, in applications where it should not be freezing. And you're going to take it to the store, and some genius at the Genius Bar is going to explain to you, you know, this is out of warranty, you're outside of Apple Care, so it's going to cost you $280 or 320 or $300, and we're going to get you a, you know, a new motherboard, and it's going to fix your problem. And the first thing you're probably going to do is rage. And you're going to be right to be raging because you spent $2,000 or $2,700 on this machine. You may have treated it very nicely, and it just went all to shit on you in one, two, or three years. And what I'm going to tell you to do right here is not rage. Do not rage. Be actually very polite in saying, oh, I know my machine is out of warranty, but thank you so much for offering to service it. Here's $300. Please let me know when it's done. And what's very, very important here is that you actually be nice to the person you're dealing with. You don't say, oh, why do I got to pay for this? Oh, I thought you guys make good products. Don't you stand behind your products? You're not going to do any of that crap. What you're going to do is you're actually going to be very, very happy at the idea that they're helping you. You're going to go, thank you very much for taking the time to see me today. I really appreciate it. Here's the money. Just go ahead and do it. Thank you very much. Then you're going to get the machine back. Now, when you get the machine back, it's going to be very, very easy to kill again because a lot of these companies do not do this crap properly. Again, they just want this to last for the 90 days, and then after 90 days, they don't really care. So they're not doing what I'm doing. They're not taking your dead graphics chip off of the motherboard and putting a new chip on. They're not doing any of that shit. What they're doing is they're doing something where they have a bunch of machines that are far fancier than this one in an assembly line fashion, and they're running the boards under these and heating the crap out of them. So what they're doing is pretty much a slightly more professional version than what these places like MadCatCom or FixCatCom or all these morons on uh, YouTube are doing where they're taking a blowtorch to the motherboard, and they're actually bragging that they're charging money for this, that they're fixing it. What they're doing is they're giving you one of those other crappy ass boards. Again, I can't be 100% certain that that's what they're doing. I truly cannot be 100% certain. So I'm not saying that's exactly what they're doing, but the fact that their success rate is actually less than mine. Just it, it just lends me to believe that they're reflowing the old crap. Anyway, so they're going to give you it back, and it's going to work after you paid your $300, but it's going to be the same shitty chip with the same shitty board, with the same crappy thermal paste, and the same design with no airflow on the bottom. So it's going to do the same thing again. Now, you may be thinking, well, why would I pay $300 for that? I'm going to suggest that you have the machine do that faster. So what I'm going to suggest you do is Google a program called GP test. Now you're going to download GPU test for OS 10 and there's going to be a bunch of options as to what you can run. I want you to choose something called Firmark. I want you to choose 8x anti-aliasing. I want you to choose full screen. I want you to choose the exact resolution of your monitor and then hit run stress test. Now before you do that, before you hit run stress test, I want you to do two things for me. The first is turn off all energy saving preferences in your operating system. Turn the screen off. Turn the, you know, put the computer in standby by if you're not using it at a certain period of time. Turn all of that off. The second thing you do is turn the screensaver off. Never have the screensaver come on. So sit this computer plugged in on your kitchen table or on your counter or on the floor and let it run this stress test until it dies. Because again, 
these motherboards suck. Even if they are putting a new chip on, even if they're giving you a new chip, these boards are pieces of crap. These machines are designed like pieces of crap. So it is very well going to fail again. And it is going to fail again. So when it fails again, you bring it to the store. And they're going to say, I'm sorry. And then they're going to fix it again for you. And then you're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to get home. You're going to run GPU tests. You're going to make sure your screen saver is turned off. Your energy saving preferences are turned off. You're going to have this running 24-7. And it's going to die again. And then when it dies again, you bring it back to the store. And you go, thank you very much for helping me. Again, each time you go back, be as polite as you can. Be appreciative. Be kind. Be polite. And then the third time you go back, say, listen, I'm more than happy to pay to have a working machine. I was more than happy to pay the $2,700 when I bought it. I was more than happy to pay you $300 at a warranty to fix it. And I'm just kind of getting concerned at this point because none of the fixes seem to be working. Uh, you know, is there anything you can do for me so that to, to get me a machine, whatever it is you need to do, so that this can last more than like a week or a month? And what they're going to do is, per their policy, after this keeps failing, is they're going to give you a new 15-inch MacBook Pro. But they don't make that 15-inch MacBook Pro anymore. They don't have 15-inch 2011 machines with these crappy A202915 boards. What they do have are 15-inch MacBook Pro Retinas. And the Retina is a much better computer than this one. It has better battery life. It has a PCI Express solid-state drive instead of the hard drive or whatever comes in here. It has a better processor. It has a better graphics chip. The graphic it chip inside it has a real cooling system that actually intakes new air in addition to blowing out the old air. So you're going to get a computer that is much better, much better screen, much faster storage, and you only paid $300 for it. So you paid $300 and you got yourself a Retina. I think that's a pretty damn good deal. So instead of sitting here and going, man, my machine died and Apple won't fix it and they want to charge me money, instead of being one of those people that's waiting for the lawsuit to finish, don't be. Be proactive and get yourself a retina. Do you want to get, again, you know, that, 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 just, that lawsuit is never going to happen. And when that lawsuit is done, let me tell you what's going to happen when that lawsuit is done. The same thing that happened all the other times. The same thing happened with the 2010 machine with the A202850 board. They're going to say, okay, we're going to cover all you guys for three years after the date of purchase. How does that sound? But here's the problem. All of you people who bought that machine in 2010, all of you people who bought that machine in 2010 are outside of that in 2013 when this decision was made. And in 2011 and 2012 and early 2013, the decision was not made yet, so you could not have it replaced. Now, after they made the decision that you get coverage for three years from your purchase date, you don't get any coverage because three years has already passed. It doesn't matter if the lawsuit wins. They're going to come up with a solution that screws you. What you need to do is take action now to get yourself a working machine. So what I suggest you do is you follow my advice and you get yourself a retina. Now, you may be saying, for I, Lewis, I don't want to spend $300. I spent $2,700 on this machine already. I don't want to spend the dime to get a new one. Or maybe you're thinking, you know, I'm, I don't really want to admit this, but I'm kind of broke right now. I don't even have $300, even if it gets me a retina. And that's okay. You can be totally broke, and the solution still works for you. Even if you can afford $300 to get a much better, much more top-of-the-line computer, there is a second solution for you. You do everything I say, and you get this retina. This retina is worth between $2,000 to $2,700. So you take that retina that you got, you take that $2,000 to $2,700 that you get from selling it on Craigslist or eBay, and you put that $2,000 or $2,700 in your pocket. Now you go to Apple's refurb store, and you buy a classic MacBook Pro. You buy from their refurb store the 2012 model. The 2012 model doesn't have vent holes in the bottom, but at the very least, it is a solid motherboard that doesn't have this crappy graphics chip on it, and this stupid issue. So you're going to spend $1,400, maybe 15 after tax and everything. You're going to spend 1500 bucks, and you're going to have a computer that, again, it's not amazingly better than what you have now, but it's an increment better. It does have a better CPU. It has a better graphics chip. It, and because it has a better CPU and a better graphics chip, it has better battery life, and it runs cooler. And, you know, again, it is a better machine. So you got $2,000. You spend $300 to get that $200. So you have $1,700. Now you're spending $1,500 to get a machine that works. So your profit out of this whole situation is $200, and you get yourself a better computer. So whether you're somebody who wants a retina, or whether you're one of those people that doesn't have money to spend, or one of those people that said, I want to upgrade my own RAM and drive and blah, 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 you win. And personally, if you're in the section of people that want to upgrade your own RAM and drive, I don't get it. Truly, I don't get it. You can only go up to 16 gigs of RAM.
with that computer. So, uh, you know, in terms of upgrading to 32, 64, you can't do any of that. And even if you could upgrade to 32 or 64 gigs, by the time we are at a point where it was here, by the time we're at a point where it's like, yeah, you only have 16 gigs of RAM and you expect it to run Microsoft Word? Wow. By the time people are being snarky over 16 gigs of RAM, everything else in that machine is going to be obsolete. Like, you're not going to have a connector in it to connect it to the holographic 3D monitor, and you're not going to have a graphics chip that creates that holographic, you know, 100K image that sits in 3D in front of you. I mean, the Retina is a pretty damn good machine. And yeah, you can upgrade the RAM, but again, by the time you want to upgrade the RAM so you have 64 gigs in your laptop, you bet your ass that they're going to have USB 8, that they're going to have, like, wireless keyboards that attach to your finger and read your brain and all sorts of cool shit to the point where you don't really care. But again, either way, if you want a Retina or you just want to spend zero dollars and actually make 200 off of the equation and get yourself a better computer that is better than what you have now, that's not going to fail again, this solution works great. Now, you may be looking at me saying, Lewis, aren't you a scammer? Aren't you recommending I do something that is unethical? Well, no, I'm not. I'm recommending that you run software that uses the graphics chip intensely. Now, use the Wayback Machine. Use some kind of Wayback or web archiving thing and go back to 2011 and go to the MacBook Pro page. Does Apple not have pictures of MacBook Pros with 90 track logic sessions? Are they not telling you how much better it is at rendering video, high definition video in Final Cut Pro than the previous generation? They're going on and bragging about how good this machine is for media production. They're bragging about how good it is at graphics intensive applications. They're bragging about how good it is at things that stress the GPU, that stress the CPU, that are no different than what you're doing right now. Again, it's kind of unethical, but not really that bad if you're doing this with a computer where they say you really shouldn't do graphics intensive shit with it. This is advertised, designed, and marketed to people who use this for CPU and GPU intensive tasks. This is marketed to people who pay the premium for that. So no, you're not doing anything wrong by doing something that stresses the GPU. You're just simply pointing out what a piece of shit it is within the warranty period. And the reason I'm telling you to be happy about paying that $300 for the repair is because they're more likely to help you. They're more likely to want to give you a new retina after it fails for the first time instead of waiting until it fails four or five times. You may be mad. You may be steaming mad. You may be walking into the store hoping that that fruit just burns down in front of you, that that logo just turns to dust, and this whole place gets turned into a Home Depot. But you can't really, uh, you can't express that if you want to get your desired result. See, one of the things about being an adult that a lot of the people that I've hired, and a lot of the, some of the people that I've worked with, and a lot of the people that I give advice to don't understand, you may be fuming mad, but you're not going to get anywhere if you're fuming mad. Uh, you know, you may not get anywhere if you uh, project that at the time. For example, uh, some crappy uh, place nearby that's just setting up their new restaurant decided to leave, I mean like 27 pounds of garbage in front of my store. And I was about to get a fine for it. And it was very, 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 very clear, very, very clear that I was getting a fine and that this garbage was not mine. I have a laptop repair shop. So when you see dumplings, egg rolls, boxes of potato chips, boxes of Snapple and all this other crap in front of my store, and the box, it's very, very obvious, especially when the shipping address on some of these crates is for the place next door, that these are not my boxes, and I was getting a fine just because they were in front of my store before I opened. Uh, you know, again, th these pricks decided they were going to put this crap in front of my store. I, mean, I don't know if they don't have a legitimate garbage pickup yet or whatever. Either way, these motherfuckers decided that they were going to do that. And I was going to get a fine for $500 from the Department of Sanitation. Now, one of the things that many, many people are going to do is go, that's not my garbage. That's not my garbage. What are you doing? That's obviously for the place next door. Can you even read? They're going to start condescending the sanitation clerk, or at best, they're going to just argue with them. And as I said in the previous video, arguing gets not nothing done. Do I hate this uneducated, dumbass motherfucker that's trying to find me for something that's obviously not something I did or anything I had any control over? Yes, I am very mad at this person. I dislike this person intensely, and I'm not wishing good things happen to them in their personal life right now. But you know what I did? I looked and I said, I am very sorry. I am truly sorry this was here. I didn't notice it, but that's not an excuse for it being there. I'm going to open up my basement right now and toss it all down there. I am truly sorry, and I'm going to sweep and clean the sidewalk, and I'm going to make sure that none of this is here uh, you know, within five minutes of right now. And I'm already pulling. I don't even care if they're writing the ticket. And the lady's like, you know what? 
That's fine. I'm not here. I'm sorry I was writing you a ticket. And they stopped writing the ticket, and they let me take all the crap into the basement, and I brought it up later that evening. Now, you may be thinking, you're a pussy. You're a bitch. You got owned by the Department of Sanitation. Well, not really, because if, let's say I had argued with them. If I had argued with them and I had allowed them to write me that ticket, they would have gotten $500 from me. If I gave them $500, I would be, they would be winning. I would be putting money into the Department of Sanitation's pocket. The Department of Sanitation pays her. The Department of Sanitation decides what kind of car she drives, when she gets a raise or a promotion or a bonus. And I took $500 out of their budget. I took $500 out of her wallet by acting nice. So again, you may feel fuming mad. You may think like, oh, if I let them get the best of me, I lose. But in the end, you win because you're getting a $2,700 computer out of them for $300. I consider that winning because they are losing money on that transaction. When you give them $300 and you get a retina in return, they lose money on that transaction. Was I pissed? Yes, but if I showed that I was pissed, I would have got that $500 fine. By not showing that I was pissed and by acting the exact opposite, I got the desired result. You don't win when you yell and scream. You don't win when you show, I am big man, I fight city of New York, I fight Apple all on my own, and I get my graphics chip fixed for free. That's not how you win. You win when you get the desired result. So... Do what you have to do, smile when you have to smile, say the right things to get the right results. Because these people are going to want to help you if they feel bad for you. And if you're appreciative as you're spending money for their broken shit, as you're spending money for their fucked up repairs of their own fucked up boards, they're, gonna, they're more likely to help you than if you're a prick. And again, one of the biggest misconceptions with this channel is that I'm an asshole who curses all the time, who yells all the time, you know, who's angry in the real world all the time. That's not true. I can very... Again, a lot of that is just the personality I have in this YouTube channel. That is not me in real life. In real life, I often have to act differently in order to get the desired result. Some people prefer that I curse like crazy. Some people prefer that I have this silly little person suit on where I, have, where I seem like the consummate professional. Whatever it is, I do what I have to do to get the desired result. When I get the desired result, I win. And so do you. So hopefully you've learned something here. Hopefully I see a lot of pictures on that users group on Facebook with all of your new shiny new retinas or your shiny refurbished 2012 machines that you didn't pay shit for. And I wish you the best of luck.